Director James Comey, uh, the top one of the top ranking law enforcement officials in the country, and of course the head of that veritable institution of ju- truth, justice, and law giving, the FBI. Ha ha ha! And what's he doing these days? Oh, that's right, he's blaming citizens with cameras for the increase in violent crime. For those of you who don't know, violent crime is once again on the increase in many major urban centers in the United States. After really decades now of decline, it is starting to go back up again. And of course, people are scratching their heads. What could possibly be the cause of this? Well, don't worry. FBI Director James Comey has the answer. It's people with cell phones. So reading from a bit down in this article, uh, he said his conversations with officers often come back to cell phones. He said they describe encounters with young people and their cell phone cameras taunting them the moment they get out of their cars. They told me, we feel like we're under siege and we don't feel much like getting out of our cars, Comey said. Etc. Etc. So yes, it's basically because people are actually using these ubiquitous cell phones to uh, for something productive, namely for catching police in the midst of perpetrating police brutality and breaking the law and doing all sorts of other things, or simply just recording police in the conduct of their duties, which should not involve police brutality or anything of that sort. So the police should be very comfortable with that. But no. No, apparently, according to the FBI director, this is an untenable situation. We can't have all these people with cameras walking around recording the police. I mean, there are so many layers to this propaganda that it's difficult to know where to begin. One of the layers would be that the implicit automatic assumption that underlies all of this is that it is the police officer's presence itself, which is the defining difference between a rising crime rate and a lowering crime rate. If If the police decide not to get out of their cars or to get out of their cars, that's going to be the difference between a rise or a lowering in violent crime. Of course, it is not police that generally are there to to stop violent crime from happening. They generally happen and the police, and it's reported to the police minutes or hours or days later. And uh, so much police work, most police work is uh, retroactive in that sense, not on the spot and uh, not because it stopped because the police were there. So that's one of the layers that uh, that underwrites kind of the, the, the problem, The one of the underlying assumptions that a lot of people make is that it's only the police that can save us from violence. Well, of course, that's a lie that the police would love you to believe. But how about this for another layer of propaganda for that? They want to tell you that you recording them with your camera is just horrible because it makes them feel uncomfortable. This after a literal generation, decades now of literal programming on television showing the cops always in the right, always arresting crazy people who deserve to be arrested, over and over again showing criminals to be insane, naked, running around, hopped up on goop balls, crazies, and the cops always perfect in this wonderful TV series that's been indoctrinating us, as I say, for decades now. And of course, it's perfectly all right if they shove the cameras in people's faces and make them look like idiots and always edit out the cops uh, doing brutality or messing up the, uh, the case. No, that's perfectly okay. But if a citizen has a camera and records something, oh my God, it's the hell in a handbasket. What, what is society coming to? Well, I mean, here's another layer of the propaganda here. The funny part about this is that unlike what James Comey is really implying here, that it's these, you know, videos that uh, people are capturing on their cell phones that are being uploaded to YouTube that are fostering this environment of hostility towards the police. Actually, if you go and look for police caught or something like that on YouTube, you're going to find mostly videos that are uh, from dash cams. So these are actual videos that are recorded by the police because, oh yes, the police are recording all their interactions with you. Again, police body cams, police dash cams, all of these kinds of cameras are perfectly okay. But again, the idea of a camera in your hands that's dangerous. So there's there's so many layers to this propaganda, but let's bring it back to what this is really about. Does anyone remember, for example, the shooting of Oscar Grant in the, uh, the Fruitvale BART station back in 2009? That's right, a cluster of police officers swarming all over this man, head down, face down on the ground, handcuffed behind his back, unarmed, shot dead by a police officer, caught directly on camera by the people who were sitting there at the station. And uh, what ultimately happened to that? Oh yeah, the officer, Johannes Morelos, uh, ends up getting uh, involuntary manslaughter, two years minus time served, even with 
blatant video of the incident, cold-blooded murder taking place on video, he, they still can't even find themselves to convict him of voluntary manslaughter, let alone anything more severe. Uh, you no, know, ends up being involuntary manslaughter because he or his uh, defense uh, lawyer argued in court that he said, stand back, I'm going to tase him. And then he grabbed his gun by accident and accidentally shot him dead. So, okay, oh, well, good enough. Voluntary manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter, two years minus time served. Of course, not only is that uh, a defense that wouldn't stand up for anyone else in court, but also, I don't know about you, but I didn't quite hear the stand back, I'm going to tase him in that video. But anyway, that's just one example of an incident of how, if this was not caught on tape by people standing there at the station, can you imagine what would have happened? Absolutely nothing. Two years minus time served? No, it would have been zero. It would have been not even a reprimand. Uh, just, oh, he was resisting, you know, had to get him. So this is why I think fundamentally people like James Comey and others are afraid of the power of the camera, of armed citizenry. And it's interesting that uh, armed citizenry in the case of wielding a camera, as I should point out. But it's interesting, this video, for example, that I'm getting this uh, BART shooting footage from Police Brutality, recording the police's dangerous but necessary. What an apt phrase. It is dangerous, but necessary. It shouldn't be dangerous, of course, because photography is not a crime. And if you go to photographyisnotacrime.com, you will find daily updates of people being arrested for trying to film police officers, even when it is perfectly legal to do so. But of course, uh, the police officer tends to have the upper hand in these situations, so they can make up the rules on the fly, and if they can get away with destroying the camera and destroying the evidence, they certainly will, and they certainly have tried many, many, many times to do exactly that. Just a couple of the headlines from today. New Hampshire man beats wiretapping charges after recording cops who raided his home. That's right, the cops wanted to argue that it was illegal for him to record them in his own home. Or national media misleads readers by validating Halloween, Halloween revolt by alleged anarchist group. Oh, you've got to watch out for those those anarchists, man. They're, they're everywhere and they want to kill... Again, uh, the propaganda is in your face, and it's sites like Photography Is Not a Crime that remind people that photography is not a crime, and uh, try to uh, let people know about what their rights really are in various situations. For people who are interested more on that, I did a, an eye-open report for BoilingFrogsPost.com back in January of 2012 about resisting the police state solutions and answers, in which I interviewed Carlos uh, Miller of photographyisnotacrime.com, so I'll put this in the show notes so that you can go and check out this video. And uh, also, people might also remember back in episode 272 of my podcast, Solutions, Surveillance, talking about the camera is mightier than the sword, talking about exactly this phenomenon, people going out and taping the police, just capturing their incidents on camera. And uh, the idea of surveillance, not surveillance, not top-down uh, viewing of everything, but surveillance, i.e. the cameras in our hands. And that is a threat to the system, and that's what the real underlying context of these ominous words by uh, James Comey are. And that's exactly why, of course, there's the patents for uh, the, the, the type of technology that will shut down ca uh, smartphone cameras uh, within a given radius. Uh, all it will require is a, a certain jamming technology, and uh, it'll be done. And that's exactly what the police are going to start rolling out in the near future, and they're just prepping you for this, the PSYOP is underway, and they're trying to convince you that you holding a camera is just, oh my god, it's the end of the world. Well, it is the end of the world for the old status quo of police being able to lie and get away with anything, and that's exactly why they are fighting so strenuously against it. So I hope you will check out the uh, the show notes. Uh, again, all of this will be linked up so you can go and explore it in uh, at your own leisure. Once again, James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. Throw, throw, throw it up. Start working like Molly. Oh, yeah.